Today we will be checking out the new MLC Sub-Zero Amp from Bowren Digital. Here we are inside Cubase and I'm not gonna waste any of your time. I'm gonna show you straight away how the rhythm guitar tone sounds. So it's sounding really stringy and really good definition, in my opinion. I can also mention that this is our entry for the monthly riff competition held by Bogren Digital. The track is starting off with a pretty cool clean guitar line and then feeding into this heavy section. So I have been using the MLC Sub-Zero amp for both the rhythm and the lead guitars. First I'm going to guide you through the different functions of the amp and uh, then I'll go into how I mix this tone. Overall I think the UI is super clean, super smooth, very reminiscent of the Neural DSP UI which I think is great. There are two overdrive pedals, one a little bit softer and one a bit more aggressive and of course we're using the aggressive one with these settings here. Moving on to the actual amp, you have a gate which I'm using like this, a presence knob, a depth knob and also you can choose between low gain or high gain. Of course you always choose the high gain. The gain knob, pretty self-explanatory, volume, same thing there, bass, middle and treble you recognize from pretty much every other amp. You also have this switch down here which emulates a British style circuit. Let's listen to what that does. it sounds a little bit raw maybe a little bit more harsh for this kind of tone for a bit more low gain tone i think this would work very good then we have two types of brightness for the amp let's listen this is off The, the second one is a bit more aggressive to me. It gives a really good presence to the tone, especially for this dense metal context. Next, we also have the ability to choose the power amp tube. So yeah, the tweakability here is amazing. So when I switch to this EL34, to me it saturates a bit heavier, it's a bit less defined maybe, so I then prefer the 6L6 for this kind of tone. The main thing on the amp page, in my opinion, is this channel selector. You have three different channels to choose from, and what is really cool is that it saves the settings for each channel. So an idea would be to tweak the different channels to your liking, and then you can just automate it here on the track to switch between the different channels for different parts of the song. That's a really cool feature, in my opinion. Let's have a listen. bottom end on this one and this is a bit more present that's what I'm hearing at least now we're moving on to the cabinet section and in my opinion this is the best part of the plugin because it's using this IRDX technology which is dynamically changing the IR in some way so it sounds more like an actual real speaker cabinet. In reality it means that there is a bit more dynamic to the tone, it's less static, it like saturates a little bit heavier on heavy hits 
it compresses a bit more if you play harder like an actual speaker cabinet and also what is really cool is that you can load your own irs into this and it will still work so let's have a look i'm using the cluster fuck ir nice from bogren digital as well uh, but i'm feeding it through the plugin so it's using this irdx technology and we will have a listen with it on and then off So yeah, the placebo effect may be strong with this one, but if you really listen to when Severed is hitting the super strong, like these low hits, listen to how the amp saturates. You really hear the difference there, in my opinion. Let me just loop that for you. A bit more static. It's like a compressor with a slow attack almost. Uh, the attack is increased, I feel. You can put it above 100% for a more exaggerated effect. You really hear what it's doing. Having a bit of presence as well. Big, big fan of this IRDX. Okay, now some mixing. Before the amp, I am using the Gujira for some added fatness with the Fatso pedal. making the guitar sound more low tuned than it actually is. Next we have this funny looking equalizer. Let's have a look. Now I'm gonna put on the amp for some context. So you can hear how boxy the tone gets. Now when I engage the boxiness just disappears and there's more presence, more low end. It's mainly this part. It's a great idea to remove this before the amp, so the amp can actually react to what you want. This is much harder to remove afterwards once the amp has actually worked its magic. Next we have these two plugins just for added attack. And now I engage it. This is more attack now. This is a cool trick to add more aggressiveness to your tone. Moving on to the bus that I'm feeding both of these guitars into. Without any processing on the bus, it sounds like this. It's a really fat sounding, right? Firstly, some tape saturation. This is adding fatness and some added saturation to the tone. Bass Mint by Unfiltered Audio, removing some rumble. Making it a lot more clear. Next I have a Distressor with a slow attack and a fast release, just to add some extra attack to when the guitar enters after a silence, and also keeping it a bit more level overall. I will play this section in the beginning with a lot of stops and goes, where you really hear the effect of the compressor. Here we can have a look, it's quite subtle but still is some added smack. Suits. Removing some rumble as well as some harshness. I love Sooth for smoothing out the low end of a guitar because it dynamically removes what is needed. There is no static cut. So you can see it's dynamically moving. That's why I love this plugin. It's not cutting anything that is not needed. Next we have this EQ. It's quite a big dynamic cut here to remove additional mud and rumble, but it's only one and a half dB. The rest is cut 
dynamically 7 dB. <laughs> Next is this trick, which is adding a bit of mid information to your guitar to make them stand out a bit more on small speakers like Bluetooth speakers. Cool trick. It's this part. Okay, EQ is doing this. Making it a lot more clear now. Especially this part here. Multiband, this one is sidechained to the drums, so it's ducking the guitars in the middle channel only when the kick drum hits. And finally, just an imager making it slightly wider. Now with the bass, everything, it sounds like this. This is also an added bonus trick for you guys that I'm using in pretty much all of my mixes. It's a little bit of a volume bump, like what is this, one and a half dB or so, to make the guitar punch when it enters after a silence. Let me just first play it without it and then I will add it back in. It's adding a bit more smack. I'm also doing this to the drums. really subtle but you can really feel the difference in the full mix. We also have all of this added post-production. I am planning to do a full video on how to produce and mix post-production in a metal context, so if you're interested in that, consider subscribing. I will just quickly show you the clean guitar. For that, I am using what is, in my opinion, the king of clean tones, the Pliny. Also, this is a trick that I commonly do to spice up parts like this, is to add a second layer, add a bit of the Gujira pedal on the Batso setting, but tuned up instead of down. And it sounds like this without, and then I will engage it. I'm also spreading it using the micro shift by Sound Toys, like this. When you blend this in behind the main guitar tone, it really creates a lot of dimension and progression to the part. I will play you a small section before and then it will enter. Bonus songwriting tip for you guys is uh, since this is only like a one and a half minute song, we still wanted it to feel like a song and not just a collection of riffs. So when this part enters at the end, It felt a little bit like, oh, here's a cool riff, but we have never heard it before, so it just feels pretty out of left field. So then what we decided to do was to add just this radio guitar slightly before the main riff drops. Then you are introduced to the riff a little bit subconsciously before it drops later in the song. Okay, moving on to the lead guitars. These are also using the Sub-Zero amp. Firstly, just the compressor here, making it slightly more level. I can also mention that both this lead guitar and the rhythm guitar have been tracked using the Misha Mansour 7-string with the Evertune, as well as the Precision Drive pedal from Horizon Devices. Yes, we are periphery fanboys, just like you. Just using the prog metal solo preset, actually, not anymore, but we found that the guitars were a bit disjointed, so here's a cool trick you can use. It's actually using the same IR for the lead guitar as for the rhythm guitar and that really ties the room together as you say no but it it ties the 
tones together in a really good way and it makes it flow a little bit more. Also, I am feeding in this swell before. <laughs> which you can't hear properly, but you can feel it and it like ties the two sections a bit more together. Let's have a look. After the amp, just some saturation, both from the VMR and then also with a tape plugin here, making it stand out a bit more in the mix. And then we have multiband compression, and a EQ, also boosting it to dB for the context of the mix. Just the multiband compression is, uh, in my opinion, really important when dealing with a lead tone because it's so dynamic. It's a lot of different information in the different frequency ranges. You really need this to make everything audible and not stand out too much. Adding some presence here, let's see. This I've done in the context of the mix to tie it together with the different parts. And here again is a, a bit more of a wide backing guitar an octave above. Okay, full mix time. Have a look. Let me know what you think of the plugging. Do you also like it? And uh, let me know, are you also entering this riff competition? I would love to hear your entries, so link it in the comments below.